I'm bad at coding. In high school, I got a one out of five on the AP computer science exam. When I entered college, I got a C on my first computer science project. And when I started my computer science degree, I couldn't even solve two sum. I was that bad at programming. Yet I was able to eventually get six high paying software engineering internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And the day I graduated college, i landed multiple six figure software engineering full-time job offers. So how the hell did I do it? How can someone who sucks at coding land multiple incredible job offers? My name is Amon, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you the secret to landing incredible jobs in tech, even if your programming skills are beyond terrible. Now, before I give you the exact steps and principles you need to land incredible jobs in software engineering and internships as well, even if your programming skills are subpar, let me actually walk you through my full software engineering journey and the single conversation that changed everything for me. This is me. When I was 14 years old, I knew nothing about coding. The most I knew was this logo when I was trying to install Minecraft mods onto my computer in middle school. That's about it. Now, when I entered high school as a freshman, I'd actually signed up for orchestra as my elective. I didn't even think about looking into computer science or programming whatsoever. The thought had never crossed my mind. But one day at a dinner party, a family friend of mine, his name was Deepak Uncle, he actually pulled me aside and said, I'm on. You should really look into computer science. It's a massive industry that's starting to take over the world. Deepak Uncle worked at John Deere, a massive agricultural tech company. Now for context, this was 2015. Zuckerberg had just bought WhatsApp for $19 billion. And coding was a cool new kid around the block. It was about to become one of the largest industries in the world. So I made one of the best decisions of my entire life. I decided to drop orchestra and enroll in my first computer science class in high school. Meet computer science principles. This class was taught by some third party company called Project Lead the Way because frankly, there was no teacher at my high school who even understood computer science enough to teach a class on it. And it was a glorified scratch course. To be honest, I learned absolutely nothing about computer science or programming in that class. But the benefit of it is it allowed me to take more computer science classes as I progressed throughout high school. The next year, I took Computer Science A, another bullshit class that taught me almost nothing about computer science. And in my junior year, I took an Android app development class that taught me how to waste time watching YouTube during class and complain about the teacher. Finally, the one good thing I did was I was able to leverage those three BS computer science classes into landing research at the University of Iowa, working on a computer science project under a professor after my junior year of high school, which admittedly I did learn something there, but really not much. Those experiences gave me enough momentum to get into the University of Southern California and also the University of Wisconsin-Madison, both into the computer science major. And I ended up picking UW-Madison to study CS full time. Flash forward through college, I landed six high paying software engineering internship offers and multiple six-figure jobs, even in 2023 after the market crashed. Now let's pause here. I know what you're thinking. Amon, you're not bad at coding. You literally did CS courses in high school and research at a university even before college. Why are you lying to me? Let me crack your worldview open. If I was good at coding, then how the hell did I get a one out of five on the APCS exam? How is that even possible? In fact, most of you guys watching probably did really well that exam and are still struggling to land a job or internship in tech. How do we reconcile the fact that I truly sucked at programming, at least before college, yet still got so much amazing experience and also fooled you into thinking that I was an outstanding, incredible programmer before college? See, that leads into my first principle. In life, it's all about optics and appearance. When people hear that I had a ton of experience before college, they see that as meaning I was incredibly skilled. That's what the human brain does. If you look at a resume and see three positions called software engineer internship, you immediately assume that this guy is unbelievably cracked at programming. But think about it this way. I could have literally sat at those internships and done nothing. And I could still put it on the resume. Just because I have those experiences on the resume doesn't mean I actually accomplished anything. Now, I didn't mention this, but I also did another unpaid IT internship in high school that I labeled IT engineering internship on my resume. It had really nice looking bullets and actually helped me get that research and my first internship at college. Now, let me actually tell you what I did during that internship. I lugged heavy broken computers from the basement of a hospital and threw them in the dumpster. I was a glorified garbage man, yet I could call that IT software engineering internship on my resume. I remember one afternoon, me and this large IT guy spent all day lugging these large broken computers up from the basement to throw away in the dumpster. And on the way to the trash heap garbage area, the guy started vaping in the car. 
I was a 15 year old inhaling secondhand smoke and I could call myself an IT software engineer intern. I learned nothing whatsoever related to programming or coding, yet on my resume, it said, IT intern. I had a software engineer internship in high school. Yet both students and recruiters are fooled by the illusion of knowledge equaling experience. And that's the secret. When I entered college, I was no better than most CS students. In fact, I was probably worse than a lot of them at coding itself. Yet I still land a paid software engineer internship after my freshman year of college, something that almost no one I knew was able to pull off. Why? because I had shit on my resume from high school. That's literally it. Companies picked me because I had something to show even though my skills were nowhere near great. That's the secret. To win in the world of software engineering, it is not about your actual skills. It's about optics, appearance, and selling yourself to employers. It's sad to say, but in life, people do judge a book by its cover. Just like people judge an engineer by his resume, not their actual skills. So how do you actually use this to your advantage? First, I'm not saying lie on your resume, never ever do that, but you need to optimize for looks to make it look as good as humanly possible. What is a good look? A good look is three to four work experiences. It doesn't matter if those are clubs, research, hackathons, unpaid internships, a work experience is a work experience. So just get something on the resume as soon as you possibly can. Now, what kind of experiences do you get and how do you actually get those done? Your best bet is going to be getting experiences with a very low barrier to entry. But the caveat here is that they have to be experiences not projects. I define an experience as your work being controlled by an external individual or institution, not just you and yourself. This could be a boss, a professor, even a hackathon is an external organization, individual or institution that holds you accountable to your work. It could even be customers if you launch an actual startup. Now, specifically of that list, both clubs and hackathons have a very low barrier to entry, meaning almost anyone can apply for and enroll to both of those and just immediately get a work experience on their resume. I've worked with hundreds of computer science students and software engineers to help them land both internships and amazing jobs in tech. And we have almost doubled their interview to application rate as soon as they started to have some kind of additional experiences on their resume. So optimize for getting good looking experiences and you'll get so many more interviews you'll have no clue what to do with them. Now on that note, a huge mistake people make when they're struggling with the hiring process is they look to make their skills better. They think that, oh, if I just knew Python better or if I had a better understanding of algorithms, I would have a job by now. Yet they've never even had an interview. How the hell is someone going to know how good you are at Python if you've never even showcased it? This is called the applicant's fallacy. So many people get this wrong. So many people think the secret to getting a job in tech is to just make yourself better at programming. As if they had just known one more language or technology or framework, they would have a job by now. And sure, fine, in a perfect world, the job you have, the offers you get are perfectly correlated to the amount of knowledge and intelligence you have in that specific area. But we live in the real world. And in the real world, no one cares how good you are if you don't actually showcase that in an interview. And even one step further, we now live in a world of AI. Soon, AI is gonna be doing all that hard computation. So the people who are able to sell themselves, communicate effectively, work in a team, manage and lead, those are the people who are going to get the jobs, not the overly cracked programmers. When everyone has a super genius AI in their back pocket, there are no technical skills anymore. The AI will be doing the actual work and you'll be building the human relationships. I always bring it back to that amazing line from The Incredibles, a movie we all watch as a kid. Everyone can be super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. When every engineer has the most powerful programmer ever known to man, an AI in their pocket, chances are your hard technical skills will be obsolete soon. If AI can do an algorithm a million times better than you, why does it matter that you had that skill in the first place? You still don't get it. I need to drill this into your head even more. Think about technical encoding skills like being able to do insane long division. Sure, in a world without calculators, the people who were able to do incredible levels of arithmetic are gods. But when everyone has a calculator, who cares? So what is the lesson here? Most people over-optimize the technical skills department and under-invest in the actual hiring process itself. Stuff like writing an incredible resume, mastering LinkedIn, building an incredible network, getting tons of referrals, learning how to do coding, behavioral interviews, lead code specifically as well. Now, of course, you can always try everything in life yourself, but if you want to take your career to the next level and land an incredible software engineering internship or full-time job this year, we run a school called the Software Engineering Accelerator. Now, a lot of people are asking me, I'm on. Isn't it too late to land an internship or full-time job? Isn't the market already done? Now, let me tell you about Olion. Olion is one of my first students in the accelerator I worked with over a year ago, 
And he joined the program in spring of 2024. So the market was already laid. We only started working together in February and March. And before the accelerator, he had submitted 200 applications and he had zero interviews. Yet after the program, even in March of 2024, we got a multiple job offers at companies like Boeing and Costco, both name brand companies that laid in the market. So it's definitely not too late to get an internship or a full-time job if you start right now. And even if you don't get an internship this summer, the market opens in June, one year in advance. So by focusing on the hiring process now, you're going to be fully prepared when it actually opens in June. We're very selective with who we work with. So if you're interested in working directly with our team to guarantee you get a great six-figure job or amazing software engineer internship, click the top link in the description and submit an application to join us. We'll walk through your background and see if you're a good fit. We've even brought on recruiters from Amazon and Bloomberg fang level companies to look over your resume and make sure you're as successful as humanly possible. That's how committed we are to your success. Now, another reason why a lot of people who frankly are shit programmers get ahead when you can't is because they're willing to do the things you aren't willing to do. If you're willing to put in the amount of effort that almost no one is, you will get ahead. You have to hustle but not in the way that most people say that word. Like I said, I've coached hundreds of computer science students and software engineers into landing incredible jobs in tech, and I can clearly see the difference between the A players and the rest, the people who get the best job offers faster than everyone else. And there is one major difference those A players have that almost no one else does. And no, they're not smarter, they don't have more experience, believe it or not, they don't have more connections, they're not at better schools, no, they're just willing to take whatever advice I give them and double it. They're willing to deal with the discomfort and do the hard work when they don't feel like doing it. They'll continuously work on their resume, message hundreds of people to get incredible referrals. They'll grind dozens of lead code problems every single week. They'll utilize all of our mock coding interviews and mock behavioral interviews and actually implement the feedback we give them. They simply take all of our advice and just double it and take that to the next level. And the results show. These are people who've gotten offers at Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, interviews at Disney, Apple, Tesla, and all of those companies. And that's exactly what I did. I was never the best programmer in the batch, but because I put so much effort into the hiring process itself, because I was willing to do what no one else was, I got multiple job offers when most other people just didn't. Now, what are those areas you need to put a lot of time and effort in to maximize your shot of getting a great job in software engineering? These include your resume, LinkedIn, getting referrals, leak code, working on coding interviews, and behavioral interviews. If you can work on those six areas, you're almost guaranteed to get a job in tech. Now, on those topics, if your goal is to make an incredible software engineering resume that gets you dozens of software engineering interviews, watch this video over here. And if you want to get so great at leak code that you never failed an interview ever again, watch this video over here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.